Hello everyone. I'm Cecilia with Enviro Issues and I'll be coordinating the technology for today's meeting. Uh, you've entered the meeting on mute and we ask that you stay on mute uh, during the presentation. In the left-hand corner of your screen, you'll notice you can toggle your mic and your video. Uh, please keep both off. This helps keep everyone's internet bandwidth running smoothly. You'll be able to unmute yourselves when we get into the Q&A section of today's meeting. Um, if you have any questions at any time during the presentation, please feel free to drop them into the chat box located here. We'll read them out loud when we get to questions. If you'll not be using the chat and would prefer to voice them during our Q&A, uh, you can utilize the reactions tool also at the bottom of your screen to raise your hand. Uh, if you're having any technical issues, please don't hesitate to email or call, or call my colleague Marisol. She's working behind the scenes to monitor our inbox. You can find your information on the screen and we'll also put that into the chat for you. Uh, along, uh, as we go along throughout the presentation, we'll also put uh, links to any online information that we're sharing. So with that, I'd like to pass it off to Alex Chen. Thank you, Cecilia. Hi, uh, I'm Alex Chen and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm in charge of drinking water for Seattle Public Utilities. We're a regional water and other services utility and we supply drinking water to 1.5 million people in the area. We're here tonight, as you know, to update you on the status of our project to replace the early warning system for the Tolt Dam. This is the second project meeting we've had with the community. We're happy to be here. And in addition to these meetings, we do regular updates for the Carnation City Council. Uh, we're also pleased to have our friends at the King County Office of Emergency Management here, as well as they can provide an update on the important work that they are leading and we're helping with around dam safety preparedness. I think uh, everyone who's been at one of these meetings before knows that we take our responsibility, responsibility very seriously around dam safety and we're committed to being transparent with you to show you how seriously we take things and take your feedback as well, one of the things today. So today we'll let you know how the warning system project is going and especially how we've used your direct feedback from the last meeting and the next one and uh, today's um, to make this project better for you as the people who uh, live in the, the city and um, we're working to make sure your needs are met. So for anyone who hasn't joined us before, special welcome, thank you. And I uh, would also like to extend a special thanks to our partners. Um, you uh, saw Mayor Lisk on the line. There's uh, you and your neighbors, first and foremost, the electeds at City of Carnation that represent your interests that we work closely with and the surrounding communities and King County. Um, so we appreciate everyone's hard work and participation in helping shape the design of this upgrade of our early warning system. So next slide, please. And this is a reminder <laughs> for those of you who have seen these, this slide many times, uh, feel free to do something else. But I'm giving a, a quick background on the dam itself. It's called the South Fork Tolt Dam. It's about 14 miles upstream of the city of Carnation. It's a dam that was built in the 1960s. It's an earthen dam. It stores water from the South Fork Tolt River, and it supplies about a third of those 1.5 million people that I was talking about, the regional water supply. And it also provides hydroelectric power that our partner Seattle City Light um, operates. So regional power as well. So as part of the dam safety system, uh, we maintain a 24 seven coverage of the dam, looking at a combination of cameras, instruments, and uh, looking at that constantly to make sure that the safety of the dam is constant and we monitor it constantly. In addition to those systems, we have daily inspections of the dam, as well as regular inspections by our regulators, in this case, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. And um, as most of you know, um, the early warning system, the replacement of that, prod, uh, that existing system, it was in planning before the July 2020 false alarm that we can talk more about if you have questions about. 
we know and we acknowledge that that false alarm was a huge disruption to the residents of Carnation and surrounding areas, and it did a lot to damage your trust in us. Since that time, we have done as much as we can to build that trust back up, including, uh, as you've heard as in a lot of our meetings, speeding up this project to replace the aging sirens, and also to make sure that the existing system is going through uh, enhanced testing, that we have um, every effort that we can make to make sure that that system is working um, 100% until the new system can come online. So your trust we know is important. We know that uh, we need to work hard to continue to re-earn that trust. So at this point, uh, if I could pass it over to Josh Campbell, the project manager, manager for this uh, replacement of the early warning system, he'll tell you about the latest updates since the last time we met. Josh? Thanks, Alex. Welcome, everyone. My name is Josh Campbell. I'm the project manager at Dow Public Utilities. As a reminder, the meeting will be recorded and made available on the SPU website. Over the course of this meeting, we will share a project overview and how we've incorporated your feedback. Danny from King County Office of Emergency Management will share a visual of the inundation map, as well as other ways folks can be prepared. Joe, our lead engineer with Adcom Engineering, will give details about the updates to the siren system, new signage, and other project components. We will also have time throughout for you to share questions, comments. Please feel free to drop your questions or ideas in the chat, and we will do our best to get to all of them. If there are questions we don't have the answers to, we will follow up after the meeting to provide responses. Since our last meeting on June 30th, we've received FCC licenses for system replacement. We've been incorporating your feedback about signage, tones, and voice commands, and we will give you details about that shortly. We're continuing dam safety monitoring and conducting weekly Wednesday tests. We've collaborated with the City of Carnation and King County on emergency preparedness. We have provided regular updates to the Carnation City Council and can you continue to do so. We also supported the Be Dam Ready event in September. We appreciate the partnership and chance to work closely with the City of Carnation, Ben Thompson, and King County throughout all these efforts. At our February meeting, we received over 180 comments. We've taken specific actions to add these to the design of the new system. We heard you that additional signage to support evacuation is a priority. We're adding digital and more static evacuation signs. We're adding new sirens, strobe lights, and multi-language options for accessibility. The new siren system has options for tones and voice commands, including different languages. The new siren system will also have flexibility for different tonal sounds for a test versus a real emergency. On the right side of this slide is a quick look at the items you asked us to prioritize. We've added more locations to increase siren coverage and we're removing vegetation surrounding each siren. We're adding eight digital highway message signs and over 70 static evacuation signs. Our design team lead Joe will share details about the siren and signs later in this presentation. The community also asked for more support from around emergency preparedness. So I'll hand it over to Daniel Arouse with the Keene County Office of Emergency Management, who will speak on how to help people prepare for emergencies. All right, thank you, Josh. Um, like Josh said, my name is Daniel Arauz with the King County Office of Emergency Management, and I am the uh, Dam Safety Program Lead here at KCOEM. And today I'm going to talk to you about some of the uh, products that we've been working on in partnership with the City of Carnation and SPU, um, and as well as some helpful tips and tricks that can help you get more prepared in case of a dam failure. So uh, we could go to the next slide, please. 
So on this slide, you can see that um, we've actually published a inundation map on our website at kingcounty.gov slash dams. And this inundation map um, encompasses the city of Carnation as well as all the other areas that the floodwaters could potentially reach and is broken up into certain evacuation zones. And we've worked closely with the um, the King County Sheriff's Office and other uh, local officials in Carnation and Duval to develop these evacuation zones to make it easy for you to know where you need to go in case the dam were to fail. So uh, at kingcounty.gov slash dams, you can scroll down a little bit and then uh, click on uh, inundation areas and then there you'll find the map. And in that map, you can interact with it by clicking on the various zones. So if you were to click on the downtown Carnation area on the east side, it's that blue area, you'll see that's called uh, zone one. And then in that zone, um, a little uh, box will pop up that'll show you how to evacuate out of the inundation area if you happen to be there when you get an alert. Um, the same could be for any of the other zones, all the way going up to Snohomish County and down to the bottom end of the inundation zone in the south side. So this map, it's a, it's a really awesome tool. We think that um, anyone uh, who is in, at risk of, you know, of, of being caught up in a dam failure can benefit from this. Um, and you can also see these little red lines that will tell you an approximation of uh, when the initial floodwaters would be reaching you. And this isn't meant to be, um, th these, these are just for your awareness. They're not necessarily an indication of uh, how long you have to evacuate. We actually recommend that as soon as you get an alert, um, that the dam has failed, that you make your way out of the inundation zone as quickly as possible. Um, and, you know, you might be thinking, well, what, what should I do if the dam were to fail? Like, do I just get up and leave? Well, we actually recommend that uh, you have a preparedness kit that you can grab very quickly and take with you. Um, these preparedness kits could be um, really anything that you need to make it through for around, you know, two weeks is, is what we're recommending actually. So um, enough food, enough medications, important documents, um, you know, really anything that uh, can help you, um, you know, just the bare essentials that can help you make it through in case you need to uh, evacuate your home. So these could be uh, stored in a backpack or in a, um, a briefcase or really anything that's portable and that you can grab and take with you. So, um, you know, once you get your kit, you can either get into a car or take a walking evacuation route um, out of the inundation zone. And um, we, like, as I mentioned earlier, we recommend that you do this as fast as you possibly can once you get an alert. Um, and as, speaking of alerts, you know, you might be wondering, how will I get that? Well, obviously, we have the early warning uh, you know, system, the alarm system that is being um, updated as a part of this project. But there is also um, Alert King County. And this is the system that we use at King County to notify um, any resident of King County whenever a disaster emergency is taking place. So, um, by signing up for Alert King County at www.kingcounty.gov slash alert. Uh, I believe Marisol just put that link into the chat. Thank you. Um, you will be notified whenever anything that you need to know about uh, that is uh, life safety pertinent is happening. So um, it, obviously dam failure is included in that, but it goes beyond that. You know, if there is, for example, a boil water notice in effect for the area that you're staying at, you'll hear about that through Alert King County. Or if there is another emergency that you need to evacuate for, that's how you're going to get that alert. And you can choose whether you want to be notified by text, by call, or by email. Um, and you can sign up with your home address. So even if you're not at home, if there is an emergency that is happening um, in that address that you put in, you can be notified. You can put in your work address. Um, and also your phone, um, we use your phone's location to send you alerts that you um, that you need to uh, get immediately, no matter where you are in the county. So, um, you know, sign up. It's really easy to do. It takes a couple minutes at most. And if anyone has any trouble signing up, you could always reach out to us at, uh, um, at King County Emergency Management. We can help you with your registration. Um, I do also want to say that 
this uh, this system, we won't use it to send you anything other than really life safety emergency alerts. You know, we, we try not to um, use this, oh, no, not try, we definitely don't use this for anything that isn't um, really, really uh, time sensitive and, um, and is an emergency. You know, so we won't be sending you spam. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this slide. Um, if you have any other questions about how to prepare in the case of a dam failure, or if you have any questions about the evacuation routes that are uh, posted on our website, or if you have any questions about really anything related to how to prepare for emergencies, feel free to reach out to me uh, at my contact information, um, which uh, also has just been put into the chat. Thank you. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it. That's all I've got. Um, I think we have a little bit of time for questions. Uh, have there been any questions in the chat, um, Cecilia? Or... If not, then I'm going to toss it back over to Josh. Yeah, uh, it doesn't look like there's any uh, questions in the chat right at this moment, although um, maybe we want to give folks a little bit just in case they do have something forming in their head. <laughs> um, let's just give us a moment. If you have any uh, questions for Daniel Adaus, this is a great time uh, to drop those in the chat or raise your hand. So I just saw something pop up. It's not clear what the different color zones mean on the map. So the different color zones are just for the different evacuation zones. So if, if you're in um, the zone that's uh, covering the downtown area, there is one specific way that you need to evacuate or that we recommend evacuating. If you are in a different zone that's a little bit further north, there is a different preferred evacuation route. So that's what those are about. Um, the, the color zones uh, in, you know, in total represent the entire inundation area, but uh, the, the different colors are just for you know, which way we would prefer that you get out of town. Kathy and Daniel for that one. Are there any more questions? All righty. So uh, if we got nothing else, I'll toss it back over to Josh, I believe, for the uh, next slide. Great. All right. Thanks, Danny, for going all, over all of that with us and reminding us of some good resources. So why are we upgrading the system? As Alex mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, the dam is safe and continuously monitored and maintained. The warning system, though, is in its fifth generation. It's aging and difficult to maintain. It was originally built in 1985, and the technology is outdated. Our goals for upgrading the early warning system are to replace and improve the outdated siren and system components. We are adding redundancy, resiliency, reliability, and improving cybersecurity. We are also adding digital highway message signs and static evacuation route signs. Your feedback has been key throughout this process and has provided SPU with the insights that we needed to reach these goals, particularly for increasing evacuation signage and sirens. We will share more about these additions and planned locations throughout the meeting. A lot has happened in the last year. The most exciting news is that the design is wrapping up for the first phase of the project, making us ready to begin construction by the first quarter of 2022. This design work included the static signage and incorporating the community's request for new and additional evacuation signage. In the last year, we have also signed agreements with Riverview School District and Fire Station 85, where new sirens will be installed. We have received FCC licenses and King County permits. We have completed environmental reviews, all of which have been key to moving this project forward. Heading into the new year, we are on schedule and on track to have the full project done by the end of this coming year, 2022. First, we will replace the sirens. This is the biggest priority. Construction on that is scheduled for March. Next, 
we will build or install the other system components and install signs around Carnation and Duval. We'll be working with local agencies, WashDOT, Carnation, Duval, and King County Roads to complete this leg of the project. For those interested in keeping up with our progress, we will be providing updates again at the Carnation City Council on January 18th. And our next community meeting like this will be in spring of 22. Now I'm going to pass it to Joe Blaschka, lead engineer with Adcom Engineering. Joe is a consultant to SPU helping to design the new system. He is here today to share what this new system will look like and what added siren and signage components can be expected. Thanks, Josh. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm sure that you're enjoying this nice break from your holiday shopping and holiday preparations, right? Just, the, just like we all are. Uh, or either that or you already have it done, which would be uh, great as well. But um, that and uh, I guess we can all dream. So um, we have a brief uh, overview of the sign and siren, siren improvements. Um, so as Josh said, we're replacing the four existing sirens uh, and uh, the four existing uh, indoor alerting systems. Uh, we are moving one siren. One siren was located in an area where um, it was uh, difficult to maintain. So we moved that and we're adding a siren east of Carnation and um, we're adding some additional sirens and things later on that we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, next slide, please. So the, the new sirens are going to look very similar to what the old sirens look like. Uh, one of the things that, that we've added is a strobe light. Uh, you can see on the picture, in this case, they're red. Um, they're not very large. The idea is to, to indicate um, if you're, you know, we're wearing, uh, you know, um, earplugs or po potentially if you're um, hearing impaired, you would be able to see that the siren has been alerted. These are not blinding lights, um, you know, it's not like you're going to be in, you're going you're gonna to turn Carnation into, a, you know, a disco dance party down there with these uh, sire, with these strobe lights. Um, I guess I showed my age there um, with that comment. But anyway, um, but if you're, for example, mowing your grass with a headset on, you might be able to see the lights, but you do have to be within visual range to be able to see the uh, strobe lights. But it's just one more indication that we did not have uh, before uh, with the sirens. Um, the next slide. So as we talked about briefly, um, and this is just a recap again, we did relocate one siren a little further to the uh, northeast. Uh, we did that because the existing sirens located on a corner and it's in a hard place to maintain and, and it's actually not safe really for um, SPU personnel or for drivers that are driving uh, down the Tolt River Road there. It's on, it's on a sharp corner and, and if there was a maintenance vehicle parked there, you know, it could be a potential issue. So uh, we decided to move that siren a little further northeast and to do, when we did that then we had to improve the coverage in East Carnation and so we added a site um, there as well. Now that site was also on the list of community requests. So we were able to, in this first go around, also add this additional siren based on um, the request from, uh, from the city to provide uh, better coverage in, in that area in East Carnation, where there's uh, actually a lot of uh, new housing and, and some things like that. Um, the orange squares um, you know, indicate the new locations uh, and um, as uh, Josh mentioned, uh, we're expecting that these will all be done by the end of um, 2022. Uh, next slide, please. So the so we had uh, you know throughout this process we've had quite a bit of community feedback. Um, it's important, um, you know, you uh, the citizens that live in there um, in that area have an opportunity to participate in this process. And so one of the things that came out of that was the ability to potentially use uh, different types of alerts. Um, you know, one tone maybe for test and one for evacuation. There was also an interest in the ability to program uh, voice commands or uh, information in, in different languages. Um, as Josh mentioned earlier, these sirens are programmable. They're um, state-of-the-art design. And so they can be uh, programmed um, and they can be changed if the community needs uh, change. Um, one of the 
areas we've had quite a bit of conversation about is whether or not uh, we're going to would use tone only or tone and voice. Now the issue with the two is that uh, tone, the tone signal carries a lot further uh, than the voice signal, and it's uh, more easily understood at uh, you know just in general. Um, so we've reviewed best practices, and what we find out is that the best best practices are regionally based. So in some parts of the country, they would use tone only. But here in the Pacific Northwest, most of the sirens that are currently in place for similar kinds of alerts uh, use both uh, tone and voice. So we've, uh, at this point, are keeping the tone and voice alerts. And um, we, we know that the voice alerts, as I mentioned before, are harder to hear further away. But you still will be able to hear the siren tone um, you know, even if uh, the voice is uh, garbled by uh, reflections um, or um, topography. So one way or the other, uh, you should be able to get uh, alerted. Uh, the other thing was the census data that we reviewed shows that about 10% or a little more of the Carnation residents speak Spanish at home. So uh, we're going to add a second language to the voice alerts. And uh, so one will be in English and one will be um, in Spanish. And uh, we can add other languages in the future if we decide um, uh, that we need to. So before we jump off into some more siren improvement discussions, um, we'll take a few minutes to answer any questions if anybody has any questions in there. Uh, Cecilia, are there any questions in the chat? Hi, uh, looks like there's not any yet, but again, let's uh, give us a few seconds just to give folks a chance to add their chat or add their questions. If there are any. Uh, if there are no questions, then I'll, I'll hand it back to you, Joe. Yeah, thank you, Cecilia. Next slide. Here are some examples of the types of signs that we we're talking about. So for the digital message sign, they will be, um, you know, uh, LED based and um, they're, they won't look exactly like this, but uh, they'll be close. Uh, the signs will be about seven feet wide and about two and a half uh, feet high for the digital message signs. Um, they'll be used in the event of a dam break to tell people to evacuate. And we'll also display a weekly test message at the same time we're doing the rest of the, the siren tests. Um, other than that, they're gonna remain blank. Um, we don't want the signs to be confused with any other sort of uh, message or a highway function that might be associated you know, along uh, SR. Uh, 203 there. So, so the signs will be blank um, all the rest of the time. Um, the signs will be pre-programmed with the messages and uh, we have some flexibility in terms of the message um, and we have not decided on the total, on the final message yet. Um, there may be slight differences in the messages based on where the signs are located. Uh, but basically there, the idea is, is that there will be a simple, straightforward message um, the character size um, will be based on the speed limit in the area, and um, we can't really use the, the signs for other purposes. The, the idea, of course, with these signs is that they're easy to read, and uh, by, you know, by drivers that are driving the area, we don't, we don't want somebody to be distracted by the sign during a high-stress situation of trying to evacuate and um, you know, have to uh, slow down or uh, do something to read, you know, a, a sign that's got a long message. So the idea is that the messages are short, um, they're quick, and you can read them without um, really having to take your, um, you know, take, take your attention off the road other than for a, maybe a second or two to read the sign. Now we also have a static evacuation signs. Um, they're going to mark the evacuation routes. They're, they're neither digital nor programmable. And, um, you know, the slide there shows an example of what they will look like. Um, we've, um, you know, we've ordered a large number of those signs and they will be distributed around uh, the area. Um, 
and so that will um, help mark um, the flood evacuation um, routes that uh, that Daniel was talking about. So you'll know uh, which direction to go, and there'll be signs for both walking as well as uh, road signs. And we also want to make clear that these sign that these are different. You know, these are the Tolt uh, Dam flood evacuation signs. They're not uh, designed for um, you know other other purposes. So anyway. Uh, Next, next slide. So the uh, locations, uh, we've actually, uh, we started off in the original process with this was with just two locations, uh, but we got some significant uh, and very, very helpful uh, community input uh, by working with Ben Thompson to identify other critical locations where we really needed to have highway message signs. Um, and the first one at the north there starts at the northeast 124th and SR203 uh, roundabout up there. Uh, and then as you continue south, uh, there'll be one there um, where uh, the Stillwater Hill Road comes down and intersects uh, with SR203 right by the store there. Um, there'll be one at the northeast Carnation Farm Road and um, uh, there'll be three of them kind of right in uh, right near town uh, there um, and then one uh, clear down at the south end at the roundabout there at SR203 and, and SR202. So hopefully those signs will keep uh, uh, traffic uh, from entering the area, um, you know, in the very unlikely event that these ever have to be used. Um, the signs will be added later in uh, 20. Uh, uh, 22. We're currently working on the design and the locations uh, of those signs, um, uh, you know, currently right now. So next slide. So um, the static message signs, uh, as you can see, they, you know, they're they're fairly will fairly clearly mark the road uh, or the the route uh, anyway that's associated with um, evacuation. Um, the locations will be set uh, by uh, DOT, Carnation, Duval, and King County Roads. We're working cooperatively with those entities to uh, get the signs installed. We have tentatively located them, but the exact final location will be based on each one of those entities' um, normal practice standards. And the signs are part of the evacuation plan. Um, so it, uh, you know, if, depending on where you live and whatnot, and, and and uh, when you review the evacuation plan, you'll be able to um, also identify the signs. And hopefully as you're driving around, uh, just in your normal course of business, you'll be able to identify the signs and, and see which ones might apply uh, to you as well. Um, so you'll have time to learn the evacuation routes. Uh, those uh, signs we're hoping will go in um, in the near future. Um, and. Uh, you know, we'll be uh, having those fabricated and uh, installed, uh, like I say, in the, you know, in the relatively near future, probably first quarter of, of next year. Um, are there any more, uh, any questions at this point? Um, yep, it looks like we have uh, one question from Glover Weiss saying, what sort of static signs are you adding on Tolt Highlands Road? Uh, that's a good question. I would have to look at the map um, that's available and um, and uh, and tell you exactly. I don't have the map in, in front of me. Um, I would suggest that um, you send an email to Josh um, and uh, he can answer specifically uh, with that. Uh, the sign, the the one comment I will make about the static signs is they are uh, they will be located on the designated evacuation routes that the county has already identified for um, for that. So, um, uh, you know, that's, and, and the city of, uh, and the city of Carnation, so. We have another question that's uh, asking, will there be arrows to indicate direction one should go? Yes, there will be arrows. So the, uh, you know, depending on which direction you're coming from, obviously on a road, you'll have to turn right or left. And when you get to the intersection where, you know, it'll be designated to make a right or left turn um, or to go straight ahead, the arrows will point, you know, either right or to the left, or uh, they will point straight ahead. If it's a walking path, 
uh, for example, in uh, there in downtown Carnation, um, the sign will indicate that it's a walking path and will indicate which direction um, you're supposed to go. So. Okay, I think that's all of our questions, unless there's anyone else who wants to jump in real quick. Okay. All right, I'll turn it over to Josh. Thanks, Joe. So <clears throat> what to expect here? Um, once construction begins, we'll move the existing equipment and we'll install the new equipment. Some of the typical activities you can expect during this time are periodic lane closures, construction crews, and machinery on site. So the work will look similar uh, to what you see with utility pole work. And we will send out construction notices in advance of any work being done in your area. And we're beginning to plan our testing and commissioning of the new system. We'll have two types of testing and commissioning. Uh, first, our contractors will uh, test and commission through their activities. And once we're satisfied with those efforts, then SPU will then uh, commission and test the system for itself. Next slide. So we'll get to some more questions in a minute, uh, but first we want to share next steps and how you can reach us. We expect to finalize our purchasing uh, with our siren system vendor in the next few weeks. From there, uh, we'll be advancing the design for the second phase which encompasses the remaining project components. We will be procuring the static evacuation signage. And finally, you'll see us again at Carnation City Council on January 18th and our next community meeting, which will be spring of 22. So thank you for your time and your questions. Please visit our project website and sign up for email to stay up to date and learn about our next community meeting in the spring. You can also visit the King County website to sign up for Alert King County and check out the inundation maps that Danny shared. These community meetings are not the only time to ask questions or voice your concerns. My contact information is right on the slide here. So you can call or email me whenever you have a question. We'll make sure to place all these links in the chat. Now, I think we have some time for more questions. Uh, Cecilia, do we have anything? Yes, we have. Uh, when will the city get the new storage unit on the top? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the Tolt Hill for emergency supplies? I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I understand your question. Hi, can you hear me? This is Adair Hawkins. Good. Yes, we can hear you. Fantastic. Thanks. I had to call into me earlier. So now I'm online. So uh, Seattle Public Utilities promised the city a storage unit to put our emergency supplies in at the top of the hill. And we even got a picture of one, but it hasn't been placed there. So when will Seattle Public Utilities place the storage unit on top of the hill for our supplies? That's a good question. I'll I don't know offhand. Um, I can look into it. Hey, hey, Josh, this is Sheila Straley, yeah. Seattle Public Utilities. Mm -hmm. Hi, Council Member um, mm -hmm. Hawkins. I believe if Danny is still here from King County um, or Brendan, I think they may be able to address that question. Uh, my understanding was I thought I, th I think that that maybe that maybe King County was also working on something similar. We'll look into that and definitely get back with you. Hi, uh, Sheila. This is Sana Cortez. I'm the city manager in Carnation. If you would be so kind, if you and I can connect, that would be great. Um, if uh, we can go ahead and start working on whatever needs to happen to get the additional containers, that would be fantastic. You bet. We'll, we'll be happy to follow up with you. And, and it's, it's great to meet you, if only oh, sure. virtually. Yeah, again here. I just wanted to reiterate what uh what my director Brendan put into the chat. We'll check first thing tomorrow and get back to you all. Um, just uh 
yeah, we'll we'll run it by a, by it on our end and and uh, reach back out. We have a, another question. Thanks, everyone. Um, can you review what happens if there's a dam breach? I missed the first meeting. Someone would like to take that. So, um, I'll step up to the plate. So, uh, in a dam breach, um, we have uh, Seattle Public Utilities has what's called an emergency action plan, and it involves several steps. Um, the emergency action plan, um, it includes the toll early warning system. And the, you know, the first step is that the, uh, like we talked about earlier, the, there's 24 seven surveillance of the dam. So the uh, part of the, improvement project includes upgrading the microwave link um, as well as all the technology connections from the dam all the way to the uh, operations center in South Seattle. So the dam uh, has this 24-7 monitoring and the uh, operators are visually um, looking at the dam face through video feeds and they're also looking at sensors and sensor data. And if there's an actual dam breach, then the system is triggered. So the alert system goes off and all the other components of the emergency action plan uh, are put into place, including calls to 911. And, um, and there's, a, there's, you know, all the activities that are associated with the emergency action plan. So this project, the early warning system upgrade is just one component of that emergency action plan. Um, so also uh, what we heard from Danny with King County is that the alert King County system will go off and um, emergency broadcasting system would go off. Um, so there's multiple notifications. And of course the early warning system will go off. So the tones, you'll be hearing the tones and the evacuation messages. Does that help answer the question? Uh, thanks. How big is the wave from the dam? Danny, does your map have uh, inundation depth? So the map that we have online does not have inundation depth, actually. It does have uh, estimated times of arrival, but the inundation depth is not data that we have um, available on the website on the public facing map right now. Um, what I can't say about how big the, you know, how, how much inundation we can ex expect is that it'll vary depending on where you are. So, you know, once, um, if you're up in the, closer to the dam in the valley, you'll see that the water level will be much higher, but once it gets down to the lower elevations, the water will spread out. So it really does depend on where you are. Um, and if you are further away in the, in the inundation area, it could be like, you know, as, as little as a, a couple feet, but if you're closer to the, to the, um, to the, to the dam, then it could be significantly higher. It just really varies on a lot of factors. Thanks, Danny. And the, the real key here is the inundation maps um, show the area of evacuation, um, which means, you know, within that inundation area, that's the area that needs to be evacuated, um, regardless of depth. Yeah, and I also wanna add on to, um, to that by saying that um, even a couple of feet of water is very dangerous. That, that can pose a serious hazard to um, uh, you know, structures and people and, and uh, you know, your life safety. So um, even if it's only a couple of feet and you're further away from the, from the main part of downtown Carnation, that's still very much the reason to evacuate and uh, should not be taken lightly. Um, there is other, other damages that can come with just, you know, not beyond just the actual feet, you know, there could be down power lines that could pose a hazard. So there's a lot of reasons to evacuate and you shouldn't wait um, to evacuate as soon as you get the alert. We have a clarification that help question. Answer the question. Uh, 
we have one, it's just a clarification. So uh, what can we expect down for downtown Carnation in terms of water depth? Would it be a couple of feet? I believe it'd be a little bit higher than a couple of feet. I don't have the exact data in front of me right now, but um, Carrie, if you want, we can connect offline a little bit later. Um, and I can give you a little bit more specific information about where in Carnation, uh, depending on where in Carnation you are, but it, it's, it's substantial. And along with the water, there is also a lot of debris that is coming down. So it's, it's a pretty major hazard. Are there any other questions? We'll give folks a chance just in case. Yep, and just a note to folks, if you uh, would rather speak your or voice your questions out loud, feel free to unmute yourself at this time. This is a great time again to, to make sure your questions get some answers. Great, uh, Josh, do you wanna close this up or wrap this up? Yeah, I would. Um, I just wanna re reiterate, um, you know, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your questions um, and your feedback. It's very helpful. Um, oh, I see a question popped up. Mm. <laughs> Is uh, there any notifications for fall uh, for the city? I believe there is. Um, it's not the same as for our nation. The uh, Alert King County maps and the Alert King County system um, reaches different zones. Danny, do you know offhand if those zones are included? Um, I think it looks like down. Yeah, it, it comes down to Fall City, I believe. Uh, let me just check real quick. Um, yeah, just the very end of the inundation zone touches Fall City. So it's um, the, the very last, uh, the southernmost parts of uh, the inundation area. So the answer is yes. And then, uh, yeah, so just the points to reiterate is that um, I'm available anytime. Uh, if you if you Google, uh, you know, Toll Early Warning System, number one hit will be our project website. Uh, if you're interested in keeping up to date with the project pieces um, that I'm leading, then please do sign up for our um, our notices and alerts through the email system. Um, we we cannot uh, or we do not just simply send emails out to folks uh you know we don't we don't spam so you have to sign up for these uh these messages and that's and then of course you can un unsubscribe later when you'd like to um so and those are important as you move into construction if you're curious about what's going on during the construction and through next year so please sign up for those and then also uh, remember king county's alert king county system that is separate and so that is something also that you'll want to sign up for. So there's two places to sign up. Uh, one is sort of temporary through us. And then the other system is more, uh, can, you know, continuous through the King County. Another question came up. What about first Nahomish County? Um, I think 
think are we where are we at with the county line with the inundation area? So do you know offhand or or the Dan? inundation the inundation area does extend into Snohomish County, but um, as far as emergency alerts that we do through King County, that would not extend up that far north. So that would be uh, Snohomish County emergency management, and the um, okay. the inundation map that we have online does have a link to Snohomish County's emergency management website. Great. And then Joe, do you know offhand if the NOAA system uh, reaches up that far? Yeah, yes, the NOAA system covers pretty much, you know, all of the, well, urban and a lot of even the, even the very rural and, and areas kind of back up into the, into the hills, um, you know, from a, at least partially back in, into that area. So if there, um, if you have a NOAA weather alert uh, receiver and you have the alerts turned on for the county, you can specify King County, then um, when those alerts go out, you'll, you'll get those on your NOAA alert uh, receiver. Thanks, Joe. And then we saw a clarification um, from Brendan McCluskey with King County. Mary Phil, can you read that one out to folks? Does our protocols include notification to Snohomish County in these situations? So the answer is yes. That was a great question. You got to see all the teammates uh, for that one. <laughs> Good. Now I'm anticipating another question on the close. <laughs> That's great. Uh, all the questions are great and feel free to email me anytime. Uh, the phone number, I, I say this at every uh, presentation, but I'll reiterate, um, oh, I'll reiterate and then we'll read Brendan's uh, clarification, is that the phone number on the website is my phone number. Uh, so I've had people uh, call me and I'll pick up and they're surprised. Uh, and the first thing they'll say is, oh, I didn't, I didn't plan to talk to you. I just wanted to leave a voicemail. So, um, and that's fine too. Uh, you can just call back and I won't answer it, but don't be surprised if you reach me and that's fine. Um, I'm happy to talk to folks. And Marcel, can you read the clarification from Brendan? Yep, he says, to be clear, the NOAA system is the same one we have access to and would use in this situation. Uh, he believes that the alert coming from NOAA would be for a flood, so not necessarily a dam failure. Joe, do you have any additional uh, clarifications on that one? Well, I th that one, I, I, what I would do is I would look to King County to clarify that because at one of our previous meetings, we had this discussion and King County said that they could um, trigger the NOAA system um, with, um, you know, with an alert for the dam failure as well. Um, yeah. But um you know, we'd have to verify, since, since King County would be the one that would initiate that, we would have to verify it with them for sure if, if uh, there's a question about it. Hey, it's Brendan. Can I just, uh, let me just, uh, I'll just speak on that right now. The, the answer is yes. The system that NOAA uses is the same one we have access to and we would use in this situation. The difference is when NOAA does their alerts, they're limited to what they can alert on. They don't have a dam failure. One. They would alert for a flood. Ours, when we put it out, it would go out over the same system that they use and they would alert for the dam failure. Oh, okay. So people would get, and a, they would get a flood alert um, and assuming it wasn't, you know, uh, flooding time, then they would uh, be alerted that there's a flood coming. They wouldn't know specifically what it was though. Well, I mean, it would tell them what river it's on. And at the same time, or probably before, they'd be getting an alert from us right. that says there's been a dam failure. Right, right. But, well, so the issue would be that, for people that are, answer, yeah. are, outside the, are outside the initial coverage area. I think that's, the, that's what the NOAA system would be, you know, I think, primarily used for. No, again, it's the same system. If it goes out over our system, it's the same one that they're using. So when we send it out like that, it's probably going to go to a much broader area than just one single evacuation zone. In fact, I know it will. 
Correct. Thanks, Brendan. All right. Don't see any more questions coming. Um, so sign up in two places, King County Alert and the Toll Early Warning System webpage through SPU to get your updates. Contact me anytime, and we'll see you if you join the Coronation City Council meeting in January, and we'll have another community engagement meeting in spring of 22, right around the corner. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and thank you for your contributions and questions, and we'll see you soon.